Michael Solokov, who I think needs no introduction. I just have to say I'm delighted with this project. It's been an absolute pleasure to develop this project. We have not prepared anything specifically tonight, but we did sort of decide that we're going to activate the project tonight. So as I and we rely on you. Yeah. So as, uh, as I indicated in the introduction, this exhibition is, is something that arose out of, this, out of discussion with Netco when we met. And I said, Netco, you should do a project with us in Salzburg. And then he said, well, okay, what should we do? And then later he was asking me about my backgrounds and what, how I got into curating. And I told him that I was at one time making paintings. And so he was curious and he asked to see some images. And I sent them to him later, and he decided, okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to put the pictures into plexiglass boxes, and uh, we're going to invite the public to improve them. So therefore, the exhibition, Fair Besser Improvements, this is where it was born. And uh, I had no, I had never had a moment's hesitation, uh, I'm happy to say. I, I trusted Benko from the get-go. But uh, we still haven't activated the project yet, so we don't really know what's going to happen and how the public will react. But before I go on, I think maybe uh, Netco could say a few things to us about some projects that might, for him, come to mind that you know have a relationship, perhaps in a way, or a kinship with this project. And then we're literally going to walk around. Uh, the space, and if you'd like, you'd be invited to pick up a marker. And if you'd like, under my watch and Netco's watch, <laughs> you can make a commentary. <laughs> but anyway, Netco, what would you like to say? Yeah, surprisingly, good painting is not mean for real, real improvement. <laughs> but they could comment your curatorial work here, which is also a lot. Okay. That's, that's a new facet to me. Uh, first, thank you very much for inviting me for this uh, project and uh, I'm really happy that uh, since we have a similar sense of humor because uh, to do this you need a, a good sense of self-irony uh, because if you don't have a sense of self-irony you wouldn't allow uh, there are some other curators some of them are like a very 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 famous you only very very they are very, 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 very famous curators. Mm -hmm. We used to be painters. We used to be painters like Francesco Bonami, for example. But I, would, I really doubt that I could do something with Francesco Bonami. Or Robert Storr, who, who writes himself as a, as a curator and now still as a curator and now is. And uh, I know also quite a lot of people who move from the other direction. For example, there are many people also in Bulgaria, colleagues of mine, that they used to study art history, they were curators, and afterwards they would become artists. You know. what, what I'm trying to, to do here with, uh, with Seamus and with you, with the participating audience, is maybe at the end to prove that it doesn't really matter so much who is the artist, who is the curator, so maybe the final result and the final attitude, because what we're expecting now is a, is a kind of an attitude from the, from the audience. Of course, some people, they might get uh, frustrated. They say, I really don't want to comment this for a while. But uh, they also, we saw some people who say, finally, we have paintings here. They suppose that they have proper labels. So they're really like going from one uh, point to the other. Uh, I don't know how well you know what I'm, what I'm doing. In general, I'm telling stories stories in different ways. Very often uh, I deal with the context, but I'm trying to deal with the context in such a way that if you in order to understand the project, you don't have to read tons of paper, you know, to see the conceptual trick at the end. So now, for example, you don't know this is in a very particular place in, in, in Salzburg, but you have a Kunstverein, you have a director of the Kunstverein who used to be a painter, and then you invite it to comment. And why you invite it to comment? Just because it is a very specific gallery, which is not really guarded. So all of these uh, markers that will be taken away during the off hours in order to be gone to steal them. And uh, 
it's a kind of a really good uh, situation for people to come and to, to comment. And so far I've done several projects which they involve the curator as an as a institution. Maybe one of the most funny ones was uh, some 10 years ago. Uh, there is a curator called Ferran Barendit, who right now is the director of uh, May, May Dos Mayors, the Center Dos Mayors in Madrid. At that time, he was the curator of the uh, Center for Contemporary Art Santa Monica in Madrid. And huh? Upper Salon, sorry, Slavis is right, my wife, uh, in Barcelona. At the beginning, I wanted to do, in his place, they have like a three floors in a former monastery. And down on the ground floor, I wanted to do a kind of a conceptual piece, uh, which also involved a real person. I don't know how much you are aware of uh, uh, soccer, soccer players, football players, but use, we used to have this uh, very famous Christos Duichkov. A soccer player who played for Barca in Barcelona. He was extremely famous in that time, still very, very famous. So I wanted to make a piece which was called How to Teach Christos Twitchkov to Make a New Conceptual Art. <laughs> and it was really, really hard to reach the manager of the soccer player. And of course, we, we did this at the very end. And then I kind of suddenly lost interest to do that. Maybe because the soccer player, the famous soccer player, was appointed to be the, uh, the coach of the national team, and in a way his uh, kind of aura in somewhere got outside the Bulgaria. He just put it, was in the middle inside of the country, and his kind of goddess kind of disappeared. I'm glad you didn't lose interest in this project at the last minute. Yes. <laughs> and, <laughs> yes. And then, then I proposed the. But uh, these kind of little things which I'm doing, and you can see here, there are some of those, that type of things which I did here, or where it's written director, it's written super director. And then he said, well, but you've done already this several times. I say, okay, so you, you mean you don't want to invite uh, neither Daniele Toroni or Daniel Piret to do a project because they've <laughs> done the stripes, so they've done the famous uh, uh, brush strokes. And this one went for a while. He was also really stubborn, and stubborn was not quite well as well. And we kind of, at the end, decided that it was a project which was called Rivals. And we made a kind of a race, kind of a competition. There were several exercises. The first one was kind of very easy. Who has more hair? So you have to, <laughs> of course he was the winner. You have uh, like a two photographs of myself and him, because he really likes to be here. <laughs> And then we have like a one label, a yellow one, which says uh, the score. So here he scored. Then we have another one who can jump high. He was really tall. And we have two marks. One is with uh, the red. Oh, he did it. And then the blue one was really, really high, like this. Then there were two video shows, uh, two video monitors. And the exercise was uh, who can make laugh the guard at the entrance of the space by telling him jokes or making him funny faces. Of course, we're talking a joke in. Uh, Barcelonish, <laughs> and I was making another things like that, and then he was like, oh, God, looking at me, and I ha, 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 but his ha, 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 was kind of faster. And so on and so forth, at the end, of course, if you, if you collect the score, his points, there were more, but in a way, I did what I wanted to do. <laughs> <laughs> so you have this kind of strange uh, relationship, uh, and between curators and uh, collectors and, and, and artists. Why do you say collectors? Because you're going to collect all the Because the Brussels are the opens right now, I can go tomorrow. <laughs> and uh, very recently I did another project, <coughs> which was uh, sort of a liquid perspective, organized by three institutions, Eichel Gallery in Birmingham, Smack in Ghent, and Serovis in Porto where I also play with the curators and they agree to play to play a nice a nice game. So here they are the curators. Uh, this is uh, Philip Van Kalkeren and Tim Robert Bowen from Smart in Games. Joao Fernandes, uh, who at that time was the director of Serales, now he's the, he's the chief curator at Raven Sofia, and uh, Nigel, who was representing Icon Gallery. So they came in early 2011, in, in Sofia, and I showed them for two days all of my works, sensible ones, which I've done since I graduated at the academy in 1981, which means 30 years of production. 
Here they are shown in one of my studios, the original works before 89, before the changes. By default we decided not to show anything from museums or galleries, which they belong to the Bulgarian state, because it was too complicated to move out of the country. At the end of the second day, all of them, I was like a secretary. They made a list, we made a list of good works, so-called pool of good works. And I was just really like a writing, not saying, oh, please select that one, it's a really important project that for me. And afterwards, when they returned back to their places, out of this pool of good works, they selected only one work per year. So when I'm saying that uh, they agreed to play the game, the game is that there are at least two, two positions in that game which they really see. The first one is that it seems that I became an artist immediately after I graduated the academy, which is <laughs> not really like that. And the second one was that at least there is one work per year which is uh, good enough to be presented in a, such an important retrospective. And I was really stubborn on this that we are not going to. So this is how the catalog functioned. So I have the years, and then here is the selection of the good works, and then here is the selection of uh, uh, the free works which they were chosen. Theoretically speaking, you can have 90 works, or you can have only 30 works selected. Actually, there were only four years which they overlap with the, with the curators. And I was really stubborn with this. They say, but we really would like to have also these two pieces for that. They say, no, we don't want to have. At the same time, what happens? There is this place, Galeria Civica Trento, which actually after my show they kind of financially closed. But they had a really good program. They will show it to uh, uh, Rosenberg, uh, Romanov, Kusmirovsky. The curator was Andrea Viliani, and he really wanted to be part of that project. And I said, but listen, man, I mean, they have been working with this for like a three years, and they already made a selection. You can't do that. So what at the end I did with him, I selected out of the bad ones, the ones which they initially rejected, I selected one work per year, and that's why that retrospective was called all in my order with exceptions. And uh, just to tell you a little bit, that here it's pretty simple and doesn't cost much money. <laughs> <laughs> Too much. I mean, we, did, we did have a party sponsor, which was great. Yeah, thank you for that. What, why do you think about getting everybody off their feet? May, may I have a question? Yeah. Um, so, who did the selection of your works? Excuse me? Both together? Who did the selection of Seamus works? Did, did you do Neko or both? I have to admit, you will keep this criticism. He was really lousy as an artist showing his work. First he sent me first he sent me an enormous amount of like a snapshots from his cell phone that you can't identify which one is what. <laughs> <laughs> just send it, send it, send it, and I say but there is no dimension, there is no media description. <laughs> Not that but I will work with his and he kind of restored some of his habits from early nineties. <laughs> and uh, as he wrote there he uh, he sent me around 30 and afterwards we selected uh, uh, up to nine. Then I saw the works as well. He brought some of them in a disastrous way, in a kind of a bag for like shopping. <laughs> no glossy paper, no bubbles, in a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that one sitting there to a nice bottle of wine or something, and, and, the, and the waiter was the waiter really was tripping, tripping, now. tripping your dinner on, on the painting. <laughs> No. Yeah, that's okay. So basically, we selected the two of us. And the disposition is very simple. It starts chronologically. I really ask him to, to remember which one was the very first one. So it goes uh, uh, in, uh, like clockwise. This is the first one. And the ones which uh, they are just in front of his office, they are the last ones. Yeah, I should just sort of add to that. When I was taking the photos, as crappy mobile phone photos. No, the phone is okay. I was, I was, the way of sending it was... Yeah. I was literally unpacking all this work from an attic in Ireland. So I was literally going up to the attic, unpacking, full of dust, went downstairs, there's somebody living in that house now. Did you say nice words about me when you were doing this? No. And, 
was actually quite a lot of work. And then sending Nick with these terrible images, which I meant to follow up on. And, but it reminded me about how, when I was painting, you know, digital photography was only just emerging at that time. And how I'd always documented the work was with 35 millimeter slide film. And then we put the slides into these, you know, into these sheets, or into carousels. And that's how I would distribute the work. And then when I had a website in 2000, I think, someone actually stole my website. Um, that's another story. But um, the images I had for the website I still had from way, way, way back, but they were so low in, mega, in megapixels. But they're small. They're so there. small, you know, so it's amazing how there's almost no archive of this work except in these slides, which are in a box in an attic in Ireland. But you got the images in the end. You got the paintings. So did anybody want to ask another question before we start walking around? Is there any other pressing questions? Yeah, but if, if they would like to talk, I mean, just ask questions so we can just continue, continue talking. Sure. Um, I would like to know whether you did these paintings when you were studying with Ken Lam at Trip Uh No, I did them after my studies. So these were these were done 1999 to 2002, and I finished studying uh, at UBC in 1996. So a few years after, just after. All of them they are done in the same studio or? In different no, places. no. Some were painted in Vienna because I was actually on residency in Vienna in 2002. So I think uh, two of them were made in Vienna. The last two, and all the rest were made in Vancouver. Yes, Joyce. Uh, yeah. Did you ever exhibit these paintings before? Yes. Where? Well, I was just thinking about that. Um, the last time I exhibited these paintings was 11 years ago. So that's actually the last time I exhibited my work at all. But these have been in, in a number of exhibitions, and there's a series of about 20 of these small ones here, and there's only about five remaining. I think the other 15 were sold, luckily. Um, no, but the work was, was shown, I showed my work in Canada, in the States, in Chile, in Austria, Switzerland. You worked with a I have worked with two different galleries. Yeah, over, over and seven years or so. How they were exhibited? With these boxes or with frames or never? No, no, this is this is Nedville's concept. Mm -hmm. So I like it. Mm -hmm. I like we it did too. the first one, I thought it was really I really thought it's uh, it's an impressive. It was very exciting yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's really like the Louvre. <laughs> no, this is first for the protection. Because he, he is not guarded and, and we're really scared about the paintings that somebody might do something with them. And also this one really provides you a good support to do comments overlapping over the painting but actually not touching the painting. Just mentally you can uh, do some corrections, so to speak. Yeah. And when did you first meet each other? Well, the first we really met was a documenta. But, um, Which document? The one where you had the, the file boxes? No, the next one. Okay. The last one. The last one. When I was in my yeah. in, in Brothers Museum. Mm -hmm. And he was standing outside his exhibition that was really grumpy. <laughs> and I walked up to him and shook his hand and said he'd made a marvelous exhibition. And I was hopeful that we'd meet again soon and be able to do something together. And then we met again uh, about a year, year and a half ago, how is it? Yeah. In, in uh, HISC, which is a, a postgraduate art academy in Belgium. We were both on the same jury to, to um, yeah, looking at the candidates coming into the program. And that's where the whole thing began, actually. That's where yeah. the whole conversation began. But also, you were part of the, uh, you were one of the curators of the show, which was before that one. That's true. Uh, the, the violence. The invisible violence. The invisible violence, which had like a, has like a three steps. Yeah. Three stops, one is here, the other one was in, uh, in Basquiat, and I was part of the, the Basquiat. That's right. right. That exhibition is shifted with every different, every different place. The work which I had there in Basquiat was called Negotiation. Negotiations, it was done uh, 13 years ago, 
I was invited by a gallery in Tel Aviv, a very gallery, a very prominent one, to make a show there. But it was one of these points in time when it was really, really heavy conflict between Palestinians and Israelis. So the work consists of a wall text and two monitors, and the wall text tells the story. And tells the story how I did the only reasonable thing, no matter how childish this may look like. I went to the Palestinian ambassador and to the Israeli ambassador in Sofia and asked them separately if possible they could cease firing in order for me to do my exhibition in the <laughs> way. <laughs> so this was the work which was seen in Basque and we kind of also had contacts with the shades at the time. That's right. Yeah. So why did you select only paintings, not photographs? I mean, it has to be kind of more consistent in a way. I mean, listen, first, first comes the space. It was not the idea, okay, she must let show some of your work. No, he said, we have a space, but you can have it for like a, almost a year. And the problem with that space, which could be an advantage, is that there are a lot of people passing, but there are no cars. Also, it is open after the closing hours. And then, step by step, at the same time, he was telling me that he was an artist before, like a painter, and he said, okay, why not kind of to combine this? You have people passing by, not necessarily art audience, not necessarily, and they could comment. So, do you want to work with the comment and the commenters, with the commentaries after the exhibition, or is it finished? Basically, now this is just the beginning. Okay. I hope that uh, the, the work will be done at the end of January next year, because this is, this is the beginning. It is possible that everything is entirely doodled up and you can't really see the painting at all. Mm -hmm. But it's possible maybe not to have so many comments and the people not to be interested. Hopefully there will be, but uh, maybe we can trigger from time to time, they could get provoked. But have you, have you been talking about the future? Are they married then forever? Or are they, is the painting separate then from the, the plastic surface, from the commentary? The, like I mean, we didn't discuss with the, with the artist uh, this <laughs> particular <laughs> issue. <laughs> but we have been talking that it's possible. I mean, even they could be for sale. Why right? not? And we split them three. This time, the artist and that is great. <laughs> Even though I'm acting as a gallerist actually and I'm in the 50, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> just, 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 one, just, one, just one exception. This, this one belongs to Gemma. To Gemma, so. to his uh, partner. Yeah. So this is out of this. I mean, this, uh, this could be exhibited in another place. We have been discussing the possibility. This is doodled up. So you have the, you move the place glass cover together with the painting. You made a nice photo of this one, printed it life-size, big one, and then you can just insert it, the real object, in its place. Or you can have a photo of the context with some of other, 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 other comments which there are on the wall. So we are allowed also to write on the wall? Whatever you yes. want. Yes. Okay. Whatever you want. Especially now, those markers, because they're permanent ones, and because we really want the people to start on the plexiglass, they're really good for the plexiglass. I'm afraid the wall is really sucking inside, so you need another markers for this, but they're not permanent. So if you do with that markers, which they're good for this sucking there, you can wipe it out very easily. Yeah. But we can take our own markers too. <laughs> 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 okay, okay. She's very we need more <laughs> Just don't take a screwdriver and make out. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm really grateful because he, he wrote, uh, Seamus, he wrote a really nice text. Usually, if you know my work, I have this so-called main text, which puts the, the main story and then you have the sub-stories. Now he did the job for me. <laughs> he just explained the whole story. That's why there is my remark over there, I couldn't have and written it better as you, as you did it now. And uh, now you are absolutely free if you want to, to start something or if you want to continue to talk. I mean, we are... I think Verbal had a question, actually. So, what do you think? Is 
It is, it is tricky part because, in general, I'm not supposed to take part in this. But I couldn't help my hands to do tiny little ones, very little ones. That's news to me. Huh? That's news to me. Are you expecting to do something? I'm expecting me to do something. Yeah, but it's more enough. That's enough. I think it's enough. Okay. I think it's enough. It's very subtle. But because I'm driving with it, within Europe, I'm driving, uh, so we are passing very often on Salzburg, so I hope within the course of the next seven, eight months to pass here and to control this, maybe to answer. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I can very easily do little doodles everywhere, but, it, but it's not the point. I mean, the, the main thing is, is, is his work. And I need no more than because now there are seven, eight little things done by me, but I think it's enough. Sorry. Okay, we're okay. together. Your question? No. No, I just started, but I scrolled in Google. It's <laughs> okay. um, Is gameplay and accessibility and participation and laughing, is that, or laughter, is that, um, has that, does it connect to uh, the way we see art functioning in society? Or wanting art to function in society? It's not laughter, but you should have, we live, in a, we live in a very absurd world. I mean, our absurd in, in my country is maybe greater than yours, but I'm pretty sure that if you start taking the facts from your way of living here, I mean, they're also pretty absurd. So in some way we need to deal with that absurd and maybe tell any kind of absurd stories which they could give you at least for half a second the feeling that you might deal with the other absurd. Of course it's a lie, but it's, it's nice when you start laughing at that moment. It's very serious, you see, so. Agreed. You're agreed. Yeah. But I like humor. I like humor and I like to... Also it's very important to, uh, when I do these things, to, to be also self-ironical, to make fun of myself as well. Of course, I know that by telling this, it's exactly the opposite of making fun of myself. <laughs> I'm kind of creating a more positive image, but uh, still, yeah. Very good. Okay, so we have beer and wine in the corner. And we have paintings. Though. And we have paintings. <laughs> well. I'm only just saying that people are welcome to have a drink with them. It's, you know, it's, as we walk around the. Better say they don't receive beer and wine if they don't want to do something. No, let them drink something and walk after us. Uh, <laughs> somebody needs to be Definitely, you really have to keep in control of the situation. We have to keep in control. <laughs> no, whatever you want. If you don't want to, don't do anything. Yeah. And to all the boxes and markers, are they already? Yeah, yeah, everything has like at least like a three markers and uh, you can comment. Mm -hmm. This painting is really rich. I really like this painting. In general, I like this painting. This is now I'm talking really as a painter. No matter that you know me with the little figures and telling stories, but I'm also a painter. You can see some of these paintings. <laughs> uh, and this is really, really well done. Very well done. You have several layers, which is not so easy to achieve the, the deadness of... Uh, and it doesn't really matter what is the subject, but you have this like a work on the top of each other, different layers, and the, and the way he plays at the very end, these, these black things, they're, they're really strong and really good. I really like that. That's why I said no need for proof. But you can work a lot on the others. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, great. So, if there are no further questions, then we might uh, move into the improvements. Or if you want, we can walk and we can talk. You can work and we can talk. I mean, we're here. Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.